What's up YouTube? My name is Adam and this is Broke Man Finance. What is going on with Hylion? That is a question a lot of us investors are asking right now. But every week, even with the dip that's happening as I film this, even with that dip, the, the company Hylion is doing something every single week that makes me like it a little more and a little more. I've even changed my background colors just to show you how much I am digging Hylion. In fact, Thomas Healy, CEO and founder of Hylion, did something that I think is telling of his character and what kind of person he is, and it makes me think that he is going to be an incredible CEO, and I think he's going to lead Hylion into a phenomenal, phenomenal place. All from this one little thing. And make sure to stick around for the whole video because I'm going to discuss a direct competitor that not a lot of people are talking about right now who also makes powertrains and has their own powertrain technology. As good of a company as Hylion is planning to be in the future, they are still not immune to the dips that come after being listed, whether it's an IPO or a reverse merger. I actually talked about the dip coming not too long ago in my one of my latest Hylion videos called When to Sell Your Shell Stock. S-H-L-L, their former ticker symbol with Tortoise Acquisition. But that dip is the chance you take when you are investing in a company at its infancy. At this point, the dip is obvious. It's been flirting with the 20s all week, even dropping into that range momentarily. As I'm speaking right now, the stock is trading for right at $30, still flirting with that $29 range. We're talking about a share price that was around 60 bucks, not just a few weeks ago, but that's what hype does. That's what hype does to a company before there's any real revenue coming in, which I believe there's going to be, but before there's any real revenue coming in, and then there's sell-offs, especially when, when people start panicking and, and start selling all their shares because they think this thing's gonna go back down to $9 a share. It's not. Don't think that because there has been a dip after listing that the company has done something fundamentally wrong in some way, they haven't. That's just the market. That's just the nature of the beast. Company's IPO or reverse merger, there's all this hype going in, it lists, it drops off. It's all good. But that's the reason a lot of investors stay away from IPOs and reverse mergers around that listing date because there, it seems to always be a drop off. But in times like these, if, even with that dip, there's still opportunity. Because now, I know a lot of people thought this was going to go to $100 a share as soon as they got listed. Okay, well, it hasn't. But what it has done has created another opportunity to buy. I believe that the share price can eventually get to 100, but that's not what the market's giving us right now. Right now, they're giving us a $30 stock, maybe in the 20s very soon. So you should take that opportunity, take that moment to go ahead and start averaging down. I, some people were buying in the 50s. Start averaging down or start buying more shares. As skeptical as I was about Thomas Healy, every week I seem to learn something more about him that makes me like this guy even more. And you can't, I hope you understand my, my skepticism here. You're talking about a 28 year old guy that was getting ready to create a, a billion dollar company. I think they're, they're closing in on a, a billion dollar valuation right now, but he was 28. Since Hylion went public, Thomas Healy became a billionaire. Although he can't quite sell out like Trevor Milton or Richard Branson has with some of their companies because of the stipulations that come along with, with the SPAC agreement. In six months, he can sell 10% of his shares, which should be more than enough to be able to retire, live on an island somewhere and, and do fairly well. But he has to hold on to the majority of his shares for over the next two years. The same can't be said of Nikola Corporation's former executive chairman, Trevor Milton, who sold 70 million of stock before the company was even listed. And by the way, just to give myself a small shred, just inkling of credibility, I made a video a couple months ago calling Nikola a complete scam stock before any of this stuff that Nikola had going on and Trevor Milton had going on came to light. I was calling Trevor Milton a liar and a scam artist back then and I got some nasty comments from the Trevor Milton lovers. 
So that video obviously aged well for me. And if you agreed with me, it aged well for you too. So I really appreciate it. If you're at it, make sure you like the video and remember to subscribe. In a recent interview, this is what was mentioned that made someone like me, Broke Man Finance, really appreciate uh, the humbleness and, and just modesty from Thomas Healy. The wristwatch he was wearing during our Zoom chat on Friday is the same one his parents gave him when he was 12. Thomas Healy said he hasn't gone and splurged on anything. Honestly, I've been pretty busy, he said. That's it. That's what he did that makes me think he's going to be great. All over a wristwatch. It's such a small thing, but such a big thing in terms of when you're talking about his character and what kind of person he is. Healy's 28. He can have any watch that he wanted. He could be doing anything in the world. Even through his teenage years, his college years, it's the same watch for 16 years. There is a level of modesty and humbleness, humbleness there that not a lot of people have. I would probably have six watches up one of my arms if, if I was the CEO of Hylion. But this guy's still wearing a rinky-dink wristwatch because it's not broken. It still works. It still does its job. It's not, it's not broken. It's still telling him the time and telling him the time accurately. So there's no point in going and buying a new watch to do the same thing just to feel a little fancier. This guy could be wearing the best of the best at this point. Why does that mean anything to me? Well, it tells me that he's not a frivolous spender. If, he, if, if he's not willing to spend money on a watch and hasn't ever, that tells me it's just part of his nature to be frugal. It tells me that he's, he's going to account for every dollar in the company. He's just not going to frivolously spend money on whatever. He's going to account for each and every dollar that is spent because that's just his nature. Look at Zuckerberg and his clothes. Look at Warren Buffett and where he lives at. It's the same house he's lived in since the 50s. He determines what he buys at McDonald's based on the market that day. Warren Buffett is one of the richest people in the world and he decides on which biscuit he can get in the morning based on what the market is doing. Look at Bill Gates, look at these other guys. They don't dress fancy. That's something that Thomas Healy is going to have in common with these guys. I'm starting to like Healy more and more based off these little random, random things. He, not only do I like him, I'm finding myself, I find myself rooting for him. I want him, I, I want him to succeed. I want this guy to do well. I don't like when guys like Trevor Milton and these scam artists come through and they just try to make a few bucks and then they bounce out on everybody and leave everybody holding the tab. Thomas Healy seems like a legitimately good person. So I'm not about to fret over this dip. In fact, I am buying the dip. Remember, Netflix at one point, they were doing well, doing well, doing well, had a huge drop off and went to like a dollar and change per share, uh, under a two buck chuck back down to penny stock level. And now look, if the company's legit and you have good leadership and good ideas, you're gonna be okay. If there is anything that really helps drive the business and drive innovation, it's competition. Would major brands even be major brands if it wasn't for their direct competitors and people just nipping at their heels trying to take over that top spot, whatever, whichever that top spot may be. Probably not because iron sharpens iron. Competition makes everyone better. <clears throat> the company that I'm talking about and one that I think you should keep an eye on is Right Speed Powertrain. Right Speed is an electric vehicle powertrain company based in Silicon Valley and founded by Tesla co-founder Ian Wright. At Right Speed, we are designing the world's most efficient range extended electric vehicle powertrains for our growing roster of world-class customers. Built on a tradition of quality systems engineering, our powertrains represent a new era in a vehicle proportion. Repowering a new generation of lighter, quieter, and more efficient vehicle fleets for urban streets. They're not going after semis specifically like Hylion to make the hybrid. And Hylion's not going after buses, garbage trucks, and delivery trucks like Wright Speed is. But 
If Halion ever wants to expand from just semis into other work vehicles, or if Ride Speed wants to expand into the semi market, then they're going to have to they're going to have to compete with each other at some point. They're essentially selling the same product. Ride Speed is still a private company, but I find it hard to imagine that. With all the success and the, the money that's been able to be raised for these EV SPACs, that there's not some SPAC out there right now just licking their lips at ride speed. And for ride speed, if they're in a position where they need to generate some, some, some more cash flow to keep doing R&D and keep expanding their business, well, it, a reverse merger with an acquisition company would make a lot of sense. My prediction is that ride speed does not stay private for very much longer. It may be another year, two years, but at some point, I think they're gonna need an injection of cash flow. What better way to generate some interest and hype and cash flow around your business than doing the reverse merger with a SPAC? Especially if they're looking for some funding. I mean, you could get, you could generate hundreds of millions just like that. And this guy, Ian, is the co-founder of Tesla. Obviously, he's got some connections somewhere. I'm sure if he wanted to he may be in a position where he don't need nobody's money. I'm not saying that, but if they needed to generate three, four, five hundred million, they probably could. Now, going back to the powertrains, the difference between the two, I'm not going to sit here and try to get into the differences because they seem very, very similar in the fact that they're making existing vehicles hybrids. But Halion does have some patents on their technology. But like I said, I'm not going to try to get into the, the differences of theirs versus right speed because I would likely butcher it. I'm not that guy. But I would like to see these two companies and future companies come out and just keep pushing the best of the best to get even better. That's all I have today on Halion and Ride Speed. Please, by all means, leave me some comments in the comment section below. I hope you liked the video. I hope you subscribed. And uh, as always, stay safe out there, buy those dips, and take care.